What's up YouTube? Today we have my man Dwight in the chair and recently I posted a picture of him on Instagram and got much love so I appreciate that. Literally before 10 minutes we had over 100 likes and I believe over 500 in the hour and it just kept growing. Uh, so I'm glad I recorded it for you guys. So we're going to do a super high taper on my man. Something a little different. We're going to break the rules on this cut. And the reason I say break the rules is because many people say you can't go that high on a taper. And I've come to realize there is no rule book. I've looked and we can't find one. So we're going to create, man. We're just going to do what feels right. What I like, what the customer likes. Some people won't like it. That's okay. But we like it, and obviously Instagram loved it. So once again, I appreciate all the love. So we went with a one and a half all over with the grain to clean up the waves. Then I went with a zero guard uh, along the edges just to clean it up so that we can give a nice sharp edge. Usually what I like to do when doing a taper like this is I like to knock everything down with say the one open and then uh, you know come in and, and I usually do the lineup all the way around the head and then set my guidelines so I don't even have to worry about that all I have to worry about is tapering so after we set the first guideline on this taper I went ahead and basically did my second guideline with a zero guard closed now I'm coming in with the blade open and blending into that zero closed, slowly closing the lever as needed to blend out that line. Now, part of the reason I decided to go high on this taper, you will see throughout the process of this video, and that is because right where that dark line is, that line is actually, I don't know if it's a bone, I don't know if it's a muscle, but he has a really deep indention or crevice there that causes, man, just a harsh line. And instead of trying to keep it lower and blend it, he wanted a high taper anyways. And I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and take it up a little bit higher and see what happens. There again, I know some people don't like that. Some people think it's breaking the rules, but uh, you know, rules were meant to be broken as they say <laughs> at least in the barber industry right we got to be creative man we we got to start new trends so anyways i was like you know what i'm gonna go ahead and take this up higher and uh and i just kept stretching it out man taking it a little higher and uh i was i was happy with the outcome and so was he but anyways so as you can see right there where that line was Man, there's a real hard indention. There again, I don't know if it's a bone or what it is. So I'm fading up against it with that zero guard, but also to smooth things out and keep the blend looking uh, smooth, I'll go down uh, with the grain of the hair as well. And you notice, uh, if you watch any of my videos cutting waivers, uh, I will go with the grain and against the grain, with the grain, against the grain. So whenever I'm you know fading or tapering i'll use the same techniques i always use however i'll just go with the grain and against the grain so there again because of that dip i was like yeah let's go ahead and take this take it up i don't care we're gonna do it we're gonna see what happens see see what kind of uh you know love we can get from this and there again man we we got all kind of love so as you can see that bone is right there and it's gonna take me pretty much the whole haircut to get this done, uh, to kind of get it blended like I want. However, as you know, I like to go ahead and lay a foundation um, because we can't focus on one spot for too long. We've gotta lay a good foundation knowing that we can come back later and do some detail work, uh, but we got a haircut to get done. And most of you guys, like myself, either have appointments or walk-ins coming in and you know we can't spend all day on one head we have a time limit so we got to get moving so part of the reason that I do what I do as far as uh, you know lay a foundation knowing that I can come back later and touch it up or um, 
you know, basically just keep things moving and come back to things. There's two reasons. Number one, I like to take my eyes off of what I'm looking at, because if I look at something else and then, you know, have you ever noticed when you look at something else and then you come back at the end of a haircut, you see little spots or dark spots, blemishes, lines that you couldn't see before. So I've learned that over the years. So for me, I just go ahead and move my eyes on purpose to something else. And as I come back and look, then I see things that I didn't see. So you'll often see me cutting where I'm totally on one side of the head. And as I turn them, I touch a spot on the other side of the head. And that's simply because my eyes have adjusted to one thing. And now I have a fresh view of that taper or fade or whatever it is. And I can basically see things I couldn't see before. And I touch it when I can see it and then I'll move on and then I'll touch it when I can see it. So right now we have a decent foundation laid for this high taper, nowhere near as smooth as I want it to be, but we took our eyes off of it, moved over, and now I'm throwing some, some little lines in the back. Some may say, you know, these are a little too fat. Sometimes I do real skinny lines, sometimes I make the lines a little fatter. And, uh, and knowing that I'm gonna taper this area, I was okay with making them a little thicker and more pronounced um, as I clean it up and taper it I, I, I think you'll see that they kind of look like they you know are a little more compressed and uh, but either way it's it's lines that people will notice <laughs> you know what I'm saying and I'm okay with that just as long as they're sharp and clean um, there again I've had people say those lines are too fat or whenever I do a part I might do like the one of them you know Nas parts and it'll be a little fatter and they'll get you know real skinny at the end and they'll say you know like dude you can't do that and I'm like man like when did they start making rules man to creativity and, and cutting hair I thought I could do what I want to do you know what I'm saying so in the back we went ahead and created our first guideline balded it out and then we came in with the open zero and then close the zero as needed to bend down towards the first guideline and now we're coming in with the blade open and i'm using my wall seniors with the master blade these particular seniors have the fade blade on them so i'm very careful uh, i love the way they cut however they can pull and snag if you're not careful so uh, we started with that open, closed it halfway, working down towards the line, now close all the way, tapping at the line to ball that out. And that's the same technique we use on the side. I know that I was talking about other things, but that's basically the technique I use. And then just to make sure things are smooth and kind of knock down some bulk, I'll go ahead and use my zero guard with the grain just to kind of smooth things out. Now. He has a unique shape to the back of his head uh, and then he has that nice little uh, indention right there in the back and and as you know hair can you know it, it causes a shadow in that little crevice but also it can you know gather a bunch of hair that it's hard to get to and create just a darker look there. So I try to get in with the corners of my blade and just kind of knock that down and, and, and try to take some of that darkness out. So on this side, we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and, you know, create our, our lineup after we already use that zero guard with the grain around the edges to smooth things up. We're gonna do it again just to, you know, knock a little bit more hair down and, and you know, prep for the fade. Now I'm coming in with the uh, blade open and I will close that as needed to fade out the line. Then I'm coming in with the zero guard open and uh, there again, I go with the grain, against the grain, with the grain, against the grain. And then I'll close that zero guard as needed to work towards, you know, erasing that line. And then because I couldn't get it all the way out, I take the guard off and go back into uh, the open blade. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to go back and forth. So I'll throw the guard back on, take it off, throw the guard on, take it off. Now I'm using my trimmers to just try to knock out that line. And it's not nowhere near done, but we at least laid a good foundation. 
take my eyes off of that for a little while, give them a rest on the fade, and I'll go ahead and work on the lineup. I sprayed some hairspray on there and brushed the lineup down or the edge down so that I could get a crispier lineup. And, uh, and anyways, we'll take that all the way across. I usually start in the middle of the lineup and work my way out to the highest corner and then try to take it all the way across as straight as possible. You know, sometimes I get it straight and sometimes it leans a little bit. And uh, sometimes I don't know if it's me or, or, or the head or what, you know, sometimes I have to ask the customer, hey, does that look straight to you? And I'm okay with asking them. And if they say it's straight, even if I think it's crooked, I'll leave it. You know, or I'll ask another barber, hey, how's this look to you guys? Yeah, it looks straight. Or, oh, man, that side's a little low. And we'll hook it up. You know, so anyways, I went ahead and lined them up, hit some color enhancement on there. Then I sprayed some hairspray, a uh, little bit of hair fiber, and then sprayed more hairspray to hold that hair fiber on there. I like to do kind of a sandwich effect. And then I'll just come in and clean that up. Uh, once again with the trimmer removing all the excess hair fiber off of the skin make sure if you're going to do this that you move quick as soon as you spray that hairspray on there you put the fiber on really quick then you spray it again and then you try to edge it up really quick so that way it doesn't get stuck to the forehead because when that hairspray dries with those hair fibers man it can definitely be hard to get off if you you know, end up talking or going to the restroom or whatever. You better hit it when it's fresh. This makes it easier. So back to this crevice over here, man. This thing has been a nightmare. It's been a pain in my butt. However, we just keep on working at it. But there again, the reason I like to go ahead and, and you know, do the haircut and lay a good foundation is because at least you know at the end i can use the last few minutes of my time to do detail work and if i don't get it completely perfect maybe the way i want it at least i have a good foundation laid it's looking pretty good and it can only get better with that extra time that i have the detail right but as soon as i run out of time because my next appointment's there then at least we we got you know it's looking good you know it can always look better i can always take more time but at least it's passable, you know? So, and I'm still not done with this, but uh, because I took my eyes off of it there again, looked at it again, like, okay, here's some more stuff we need to blend. And now taking my eyes, eyes off of it again, doing something else that needs to be done. I come in, lay the trimmer blade flat on the waves and just, you know, very gently and slowly move throughout the head going with the grain cutting off all those little uh, leftover hairs man to make it as smooth as possible now i'm coming in with my curved shears and uh doing the same thing man just trying to knock off loose hairs i think this alone helps take the cut to a whole nother level because you can have a nice blend but leave with little hair sticking out everywhere and uh and it's frustrating man it just isn't as clean as it could be so that's one of the details that i like to do so now we're going to clean up the beard and there again see i was hitting the back of the line and then i looked up at the blend and i seen some things i wanted to hit so i hit them while i'm seeing them that's a huge point that i want you guys to get some people you know they're like man it seems like there's no organization there like you're bouncing around but i take my eyes off because when i'm looking at something after a while it just starts looking blurry anyways right and i don't see maybe what i need to see so whenever i take my eyes off of it and i'm working on the beard or whatever and i glance back up then i see a spot or i see a line and i hit it while i see it that's one thing I want y'all to get through this video is I hit it while I see it. And anyways, I feel like that's one of the things that have helped me to have blurrier blends. Uh, you know, just lay a good foundation. Do what you need to do. But if you see something, hit it while you see it, right? So now I'm going to come in and use the pencil. Obviously, this is not necessary. But for me... I like to do it if I have a little extra time because the contrast, he's a dark dude, right? And speaking of dark, look how wide I am. Sheesh. 
Anybody else know that I'm glowing? What's up with that? I need to adjust my camera, man. My skin's so white. Some dude the other day said, man, this dude look like he got white gloves on. I was like, yeah, thanks a lot. Way to help my, uh, my insecurities. <laughs> but anyways, he's a little darker. So uh, whenever I put the pencil on there, it gives a good contrast, man. It, from his dark skin to his dark hair. It just makes it pop. It makes it look sharper. And, and they love it, man. They're like, woo, this thing looks so good. So anyways, now that I have them all cleaned up, hit them with the razor, now I have those last few minutes to really focus on different things on the taper that I wanna that I wanna touch up. And I just keep working at it until I get it to where I feel like it's looking blended, you know? So now being the cut is pretty much done. I could send him out the door like this and he would be happy. However, my customer's not here yet. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep on working. I want to knock this little dark spot out. And because there's a shadow there because of that bone or that ridge, it, it, it ain't going to come all the way out. But I'm going to get it as good as possible. And whenever I take pictures, then I'm going to go ahead and, and, you know, stand at an angle where you can't really see that, where you just see the taper. But anyway, so guys, here's the finished cut. I hope you like it. We're going to go ahead and clean up his neck, hit him with that cherry almond alcohol, and send him on his way. Anyways, hey, I appreciate you guys, man. God bless you. If you are not subscribed to the channel, man, go ahead and do that now. What you waiting for? Hit that like button. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what's good in your life. And uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do that at S period craft underscore blends with a Z. God bless you guys. Until next time. Peace.